I want to talk about recovering your calling. We want to talk about what God wants to do in your life today. On Easter, we talked about your resurrection. We kind of decided that it's one thing for Jesus to rise again as we commemorate Easter Resurrection Sunday, but it's very important for you to rise again. It's imperative that you have a resurgence or resurrection in your life. Then we talked about last week, as we continued in the book of John, we talked about living again. It's one thing to rise again. It's one thing to have a resurrection. It's one thing to come up out of a death experience. It's another thing to start living again. We're thankful that God gives us a second chance after a breakup of a relationship, a divorce, whatever, maybe a failed business, and God allows us to live again. We talked about that. But this week, we're talking about recovering your calling. We're continuing on in the book of John. This is the last chapter in the book of John. And there's quite a few verses. There's actually three slides. But God wants you not just to live again. God wants you to rediscover your calling, your purpose in life. You see, it's one thing for you to come up out of the, the ashes and the defeats of life. You got to do that. You got to have a second chance. It's another thing to, to begin living again, to, to come back and to, to, to start a new job or to, to begin a new relationship, whatever it is for you in your life. But then it's another thing for you to go back to the beginning of why you were created. It's another thing for you to somehow to rediscover your purpose all over again. You see, that's what sustains you. That's what helps get you up every day. That's what gives you the drive in your life. It's imperative that you rediscover your purpose or your calling. We're beginning in, in chapter 21, and it, 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 it's, it's about, uh, this. it starts off where it's about after Jesus appeared to the disciples. See, what happened right before this is that the disciples, it says, were locked in fear. They didn't know if now they were come for them and they were scared. They killed their leader. They crucified their leader. They were now shut up, it says, in two different times. They, Jesus appeared to them in two different places. This is the third appearance before Jesus went to heaven. As you may know, Jesus walked the earth for 40 days after the resurrection. And part of his uh, uh, thought was to get the disciples back in the game. They were delusioned a little bit. Uh, Peter uh, uh, went AWOL. Here he went fishing. And, and Jesus wanted to make sure that, that they knew that the plan was intact. That though they killed him, that though things went astray a little bit, that it was all planned. And in your life, it would be easy to begin to wonder how things are working out. But here, God wanted to now, in this third appearance, Jesus wanted them to rediscover why he called them from the beginning. And they were locked in fear before that. And we can read a few verses afterwards. Jesus appeared again to the disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got in the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Here what we had is they were, they were locked in fear. The doors were locked. There's two different scripture contexts there. Jesus came through the locked doors. And he, he says, listen, here's my, here's my side, here's my, my hand prints, the nail prints. I'm alive, it's working out. Don't worry. And they started to live again. And now it says here that they began to go fishing. Maybe in your life, you had a tragic experience. You didn't think it, was, it would work out. You, you put the sheets over your head. You, you try to shut out life. God gave you some new hope. You began to step out. You filled out the application again. You began to date again. You began to, you began to try again. You started that business, whatever it may be. But here we see 
that Peter now got out of his mode of, of fear and he went back fishing. And that's where we pick up here. He says, I'm going out to fish. You know, as I looked at this and recovering your calling, and there are three slides here. We're actually looking at about uh, 22 verses, so it's a little tough. But it's a good story. It's a story of your life. It's just kind of a story where you're at today, some of you. It's a story of what God wants to do in your life today. That's why we got to look at it in, in a close manner. But we see here that Peter went out, he says, I'm out to fish. He kind of was getting out of his uh, a mode of worrying that, you know, they were going to come after him. He started to think that maybe he can do this again. But he went back to what was familiar to him. He went back to fishing. He kind of just kind of said it, I'm going out to fish. And it says that some others went with them. I just kind of want to throw in this. Sometimes when we begin to go in the wrong way, and this is not my point, but sometimes it's easy to attract others to go in the way that you're going. Your kids, uh, relatives around you. That's why it's so important that you begin to move in the right direction because you're a leader. People are looking at you. But here we go here that he says, I'm going out to fish and we'll go with you. But listen, as I see here about the recovering, them now recovering their calling. This is the last appearance, the third appearance. I'm kind of setting it up a little bit this morning. We're going to get into our points. But I see three things here in the scriptures that how Jesus began to, to, to help them rediscover their calling. First of all, there was failure. How are you going to rediscover your purpose in life? How are you going to get back to where you need to be? Oh, you might have survived that tragedy. You might have gotten out of that thing that you thought was going to kill you. You had a resurrection. You're here today. It, life didn't kill you that much. You survived it. You didn't think you were going to survive it. You, you got through it. Then you start thinking, wow, I'm alive. I, I think I can live again. We talked about that last week. But this week, God wants to go a little deeper in your life. God doesn't want you just to live. He wants you to thrive. He wants you to rediscover what he really has for you. Three things. How did Peter rediscover his calling? If you look at this chapter, it was about how Jesus got him back to becoming a fisher of men. Here, he went out fishing again. That's what he did. He just went out and fished. He was living again. He, he started to do it. Some of you, you're starting something and, you know, maybe God wants to realign you. It says here, I'm going out to fish, but it didn't work. Three quick things and I'll give you the points. They experienced failure. Some of you are wondering why something is not working out for you today. Some of you are wondering why, the, you know, it's not happening, why it's not being successful. Maybe Jesus is actually setting you up for you to rediscover your true intent and true purpose in your life. You see, listen, if they would have been successful here, it says here that they went out fishing and he, others came with them, but they caught nothing. It was a failed experience. Now, Peter shouldn't have, he was an experienced fisherman in his past. He knew how to fish. He, they, they were all fishermen. But here, Jesus didn't allow them to be successful. Let me just say this. God has a calling on your life. You were born with a purpose. God began to spoke with you. Maybe you got off track for a while. Maybe there was a death. You didn't think it could happen again. But you started to see that, wow, I'm, I'm alive. I, I, I think I can try this again. But God doesn't want you to waste your last years in just doing your own thing. God wants to bring you back to your original condition, your, his original intent for you. You say, what is that? What does God have for me? Listen, I believe that every one of you here is called with a purpose. God has a plan for you. I don't care what you do in your vocation. God has a specific purpose in your life. We see here that he went out and went fishing, but they were uh, not successful. Friend, don't worry about if what you're doing 
isn't working out. It seems like you're running into one uh, headwind after another. Maybe the Lord is actually working in your life more than ever. Maybe God is setting you up for what he has for you. As a matter of fact, listen, if this would have worked out for Peter, he never would have became the fishers of men that we're going to see at the last of the chapter here. At the end of this chapter, Jesus now got their hearts. He captured their hearts because now their failure, they were open to receiving. They, they failed at going back to their old ways. It wasn't working. He appeared to them in the chapter 20 two different times. Now he's about ready to go to the Father and he wanted to cement some things in their heart. God wants to cement some things in your heart so that you can become all he's called you to be. God wants to bring back some things. Sure, you've experienced some death. Sure, you've been through some things. You've been through some hardships like no man can endure. But you made it. You're alive. You're still breathing. You know that, there's a, that you can live again. You know that there is a second chance. But God doesn't want you to just go through everyday life without his original intent. Why he saved you. He saved you for a purpose. He called you for a purpose. And it says here, that they caught nothing. Don't worry about catching nothing. Don't worry about that not working out. Maybe that's all part of the plan that God has for you. You see, if that relationship worked out in that way, maybe God can't get you to where he really wants you to be. You see, if that job is a closed door, maybe that other job or that business, whatever it may be, you won't find what God has for you. Closed doors many times are an answer to prayer, but we just don't like it at the time. Many times when the things are shut up and we're not experiencing the things we want, we think God isn't working. But God is actually, God works through the times of waiting. We just don't understand it. God works in the waiting room. The waiting room is, is a time where, where you're wondering what's going on. Is it working? Is, do, do, does my kid have uh, uh, 10 toes or, and 10 fingers? We don't know what's going on. They're behind the doors. But God works in the waiting room. God is there in the midst of it all. And sometimes when you're wondering what's going on, it doesn't mean that God isn't active in your life. I encourage you to stay in the game. Go to the next slide. So we see quickly here that in recovering our calling, the third appearance, the third Sunday, post the, uh, Easter, Jesus now wanted to really drill to them that he, he saved them for a purpose. And I know this is a lot of scripture, but in talking about recovering your calling, we're not going to read it all, but maybe you could read some of the verses as I'm talking. But the second quick thought, was, well, sure, failure is part of it. Friend, failure, some of the best people that got somewhere in this life have failed. If you're afraid of failure, you're never going to get anywhere. Listen, the guy who invented these light bulbs, you know how many times he failed at it? The electricity, you know how many times? Listen, failure is a part of success. So if you're here today thinking, man, it's not working, maybe God is actually working and you don't even know it. We see here that they came up empty. They, they didn't catch nothing. Failure was part of the recovery process. That's my first thought to you. Failure is a part of where God wants to bring you. The second quick thought. Not only did they experience failure, they did find fruit. Wow. Right afterwards, and these are the, all the verses here. Right after the failure, Jesus came on the scene and says, Hey, do you got any? And, you could read it there. I'll paraphrase it. I've read it a hundred times this week. But he says, hey, do you got any? Did you catch any fish? They said, uh, no. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Jesus said, hey. He st they, when they understood it was Jesus, they said, throw your nets to this side of the boat. They did it, and they caught a lot. They brought in a lot of fish. As a matter of fact, it goes on to say, you can read it there, that they were towing a, a whole boatload. Then when they came to shore, it says later 
in, in the scripture here that Jesus had some fish on shore. We don't know how Jesus got those fish and he even had some bread. There was a fire and he was making this. When they came to shore with all this fish, he already had some fish, some bread, and he was also cooking them a meal. Listen, here's my second thought to you. What does this mean to me today, Pastor? First of all, failure is part of your recovery. It's, 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 it's the first point. It's not going to work out many times the way you thought. The second is you are going to have fruit. What do you mean? Is the Lord just going to allow me to always fail? No. God wants you to have fruit in what he's doing in your life. You see, God, Jesus started to get a part of their life now. He started to. He didn't want them to have success when outside of him. But God wants to give you all the fruit that you need to succeed in your life. But he wants you to do it his way. He wants you to, to, for him to be a part of it. Listen, I pray, every one of you, that, if, if, that nothing blossoms in your life that's not of God. You say, that's pretty mean of you, Pastor. No, no, it isn't. Because God is going to fill it back up with what's of him in your life. So, so I pray a prayer many times, Lord, you know, let your will be done for your people. I don't know if they should have the child, but you know God. But listen, we see here that in the scriptures that they did find fruit and it was a lot of fruit. Some of you are wondering, can you have the life that you really believe is the right life. Oh, you know, my, my brother over here has that. They have this over here. No, listen, God's not here to deny you. As a matter of fact, God wants to give you bountiful blessing. God wants to cause things to, to, to keep over for you. Listen, he's called you to be a blessing. We see here, first they caught nothing. Now they had more than they needed. 153, it says at one place, and then Jesus had some more, and he says, hey, we got fish everywhere. God wants to bless you more than you know. He wants to give you money. He wants to give you health. He wants to give you the things you need. Why? Why? Because in the midst of your calling, he wants you to do it his way. Listen, you take upon yourself the cause of Christ, you're never going to lack. David said it this way in the scriptures. He says, listen, I've never seen the righteous beg. I never. Listen, God is going to allow it to blossom in your life when he begins to get a part of what he's doing in your life. Listen, you don't want that relationship to work out if it's not of him. You don't want that job, you know, to be there 20 years if it's not of him. You know, you want God to shut the door now and open up this other job that's of him. We don't know. Listen, but God, now Jesus started to get a part of it. He started to get a part of it. And now they had all their fish they, that they could have needed. God wants to give you the tools you need. He wants to give you the things in your life. But he wants to be a part of it. Listen, my, my, many of my, my family come from bakeries. My brothers and my parents, they own bakeries around Illinois. And, you know, I was raised in the bakery trade. Got up two in the morning, one in the morning my whole life. Uh, we had different bakeries throughout Illinois. I decided, well, after I quit school and uh, messed up a little bit, uh, high school, I decided to go to Bible college after the Lord kind of tapped on my shoulder. You know, I remember, that, you know, my, uh, someone saying to me, you're never going to be able to make a living doing that. You know, we make a living working hard, uh, producing, and they're very successful. Brothers are very successful today. But you know where I'm at today? I decided to go that way and put myself through Bible college, worked at Winchell Donuts in, in, in uh, Schaumburg. And I remember people saying, you're never going to be able to raise a family. You're never going to be able to do that. Listen, and I, I don't want to say this in the wrong way, so hear me right. But you know, as I look back and preparing a sermon, I've never suffered at all. There's been more than enough. Listen, here's what I want to say. Why was that? Listen, one time, my dad said, here, I'll give you this bakery. He was, he was about, you know, give me one. And we, uh, if I would quit Bible college, and I, don't, I say that very humbly because he was just trying not his best for me. But listen, but God didn't want that to work out. God wanted me to do his calling. And I remember spending a few years in China and with five kids in, 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 in uh, not a one bedroom, a no bedroom apartment with no heat or very little heat in the middle of winter. 
But listen, I was rich inside. I had what God wanted. Here's what I want to say to you. I don't know what God has for you, but get in his plan for your life and everything else is going to work out. God will take care of all the others. We see here that he was trying to teach him. He gave it all to him. Do you think God really is worried about giving you a house? Listen, God wants to maybe give you a hundred houses. If you'll put some uh, kids in there that need a house. You think God don't want to give you money? God wants to give you a lot of money. Oh, uh, be careful, pastor. Listen, listen, God owns it all. Listen, God owns it all. But listen, where are you today? Can he trust you with the little? Can he say, oh, when I win the lottery, then I'll give 10 bucks to the Lord. Can you give a dollar to the Lord today? Listen, God is interested in you. Where are you at today? And he will give you more. God wants you to line up with his calling in your life so he could bring about. He, he wants to give you bountiful blessings. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. But maybe he's waiting. He, maybe he's waiting for you to understand that fishing in this pond ain't going to work. Maybe he's waiting to say, you know, hey, you know, no, no. Get with what he has for your life. Start, you know, saying, Lord, what do you have for me? God is going to open up a window for you that you never dream is possible. God is very able to help you. Okay, we see here. So, the first, I said to John Davis, I never should preach these sermons where there's so many verses. I always like just three verses so I could stay on track. I hope you're getting it. But here we go. First of all, they experience failure. How is your recovery going to look like? You're probably going to experience some failure. That's part of the alignment. That's part of God getting your attention and, you know, shifting you a little bit. Then we see quickly here that they did find fruit. God is not wanting to hold back from you. Listen, he's created it all. He wants to give you what you need. He, as a matter of fact, it's God's desire to bless you. Okay, the third point, they needed to follow him. They were told to follow him. So there was failure part of it. There was fruit a part of it. You are going to be fruitful when you start to do his cause. Let me just say this. You take upon the cause of Christ, I guarantee you, you will never lack. You start picking up someone for church in your car. Yes. You'll see what God will do. You start, I remember in Bible college, I used to have this, you know, I said, Lord, what could you do with this goofy dropout ex-baker? You know what I did in this little church I was going to? I would have this van and I got this little VW van and I started picking up and I'd have uh, the whole front wall full. God was waiting for me to get my heart in line with him for he would give me what I needed. Listen, friend, God will give you what you need. Take upon his cause in your life. You say, I'm a welder. What does that mean? No, 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 no. God has welders for Christ. God has, oh, I'm a banker. Well, I'm just a housewife. No, 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 no. You do what you, you be walking around that house praying for, for people. You be doing what God has called you to do. He'll bring things in you that you never thought were possible. Listen, we're talking about the kingdom and our last quick thought. They were told to follow. What do you mean? It says here in the scripture. It says here, it says, follow me. Over and over, the second part, last part of the chapter before Jesus was taken up. He said, hey, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Oh, you know I love you. Peter, do you care for me? Do you, do you, do you love me? Jesus, I love you. Well, feed my sheep. He said it to him a third time. Peter. You know the story. It's in, it's in the, the text there. Peter started getting frustrated. You know I love you. Jesus wanted to cement it, that they would really get it in your heart that about the big picture. God wants to rearrange some things in your life. What's important to you today? Listen, I don't talk about this at all, but really one day you're going to die. The Bible says that it's all hay and stumble. Listen, who you bring to heaven is the most important thing you could do. You want to be rich? You want to be rich? Do Take upon the cause of Christ. You'll be rich. Listen, we see here, he wanted to now get it in their heart. 
He wanted to somehow get it. And he, he starts talking about reinstating him. And then he, he says here, follow me. I don't know. Part of your calling, and our last point, and we're, we're done here, but how is your recovery going to look like? You're going to have to follow him. I don't know where the Lord's going to lead you. I don't know how he's going to lead you. But let me tell you, settle it now. Come hell or high water, you're going to follow him. Come that the enemy can come at you like Job and steal everything away. Well, then the Lord's going to bring it all back three times. But decide that, decide like that song, no turning back. No turning back. Let me tell you, I might not be the sharpest pastor in the world. I might not be the sharpest uh, husband or father. I understand that. I understand it. But let me tell you something. I know for a fact. Well, I got to be a little careful. I know for a fact that I'm going to serve the Lord all the days of my life. Can you say together, can you say, no matter what comes my way, that I'm going to serve God? I don't care what the, this world throws at me. God is first place in my life. You have a desire. You have a desire. You say, God just didn't call, just didn't save me just to go to heaven. God saved me. God gave me this because he has a plan for my life. Listen, friend, don't waste the cause of Christ in your life. God has a purpose for you and a plan. And he tried to say it over and over to him. He says, follow me. He said, hey, he said, feed my sheep. And he say, follow me. Okay, in closing, I'll wrap it up one more time quickly. How is your success? How's getting back on track going to look for you? How's your recovery going to look? How are you going to reclaim your future? How are you going to be successful in the way that God has you? First of all, there may be some rearranging. There may be some reordering. There may be some shuffling. Some things may die. I know you're not going to like it. You're going to say, ah, man, I... I've been fishing at this hole for 35 years. I should at least get one bite. God's going to dry up the well. Then you're going to come over here and you're saying, wow. You know, now all of a sudden it's the Lord is showing me things are working. But let me say at the end of the day, he wants your heart. He wants you to surrender to him 100%. Listen, friends, the time we have on this earth is short. I know I don't talk about this a lot, but what you do for Christ is the most important thing you can do. You say, we're a small church here. Listen, friends, listen. See those kids there? Listen, listen, you're a part of their life. You say, oh, if I don't show up, it doesn't matter. If you don't show up, it doesn't matter. I'd have one less people, person to preach to. No. It does matter. You got a place. In, in this world. You've got a place where you're at today. Oh, it don't look like much. I'm just bringing this little thing for the potluck. Listen, listen. I know when you're not there. Listen, God has a plan for you. Listen, God, maybe God wants you to take some kid by the hand and pray for him. And then when they're 19, they're going to remember your face. Don't tell me that God don't have a plan for you. God has a calling on your life. Go to that nursing home next door to you. Make that dish, make that pie, and give that person. Be Jesus to your surroundings. You say, whoa, this is a different kind of sermon. Yeah, it is. It's the third Sunday after Easter. God has a plan. He wanted to cement, the, he wanted to cement some things in the life of his people before he went to heaven. Father, bless your people, I pray. Bless your people, I pray. Is there someone here? I say, hey. I need Jesus in my life. Just close your eyes just for a moment. We're, we're, we're out of here. Is there someone here that would say, I need Jesus in my life? If that's you, raise your hand. No one looking around. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's all pray this together. Dear Jesus, I love you. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sorry for making it about me. I love you. I serve you. I need you. In Jesus' name. Father, bless your people now. Lord, it's a tough world out there. And I know this is a message that mm, 
we think about ourselves, and rightly so, we live in the world and we got to fend for ourselves, it seems. But Lord, really, you said that you would never leave us nor forsake us. You said that you would be there at all times. So we're putting our trust in you this morning. We love you. This is your church, Father. These are your people, the sheep of your pasture. Raise them up to be the men and women of God that you've called them to be. Father, bless your people, I pray. This is an army. Oh, I know it's maybe not the hugest army, but it's an army of God in this little locale. When your people go out in the battlefield, weaponize them, fill them with the Holy Spirit, we pray. Give them the mind of Christ, anointing, supernatural fish, favor, jumping in their boats. And they're going to hand a fish along the way to someone else. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, let's stand together.